you don't always see like good examples of why stuff should be the right talk, but that's quite a good one. Not gonna be back on today, mate, unfortunately. It was it was supposed to be, um, but this switch is, is, is fucked, basically. So we need to get a new one. Yo, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm actually in an office building that's been savaged by a fire on the ground floor anyway. So yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Hopefully I'll be able to show you more of that later. Right now, I've got to go finish off a sub main. The fire destroyed loads of the distribution circuits that pass through the ground floor. So we've actually pulled in a new feed to the second one of the second floor boards. It's a massive office building. But yeah, we pulled in one of the new feeds. It's pretty much ready to go upstairs. We're gonna go crimp it, heat shrink it, and bolt it down. And then we'll head into the main room, get that connected up. And then hopefully I can get access to the fire area today and show you the insane damage caused by this fire it burnt for like seven hours tore through the place um, they've had to prop the building up with steels and stuff like that so it's a serious serious incident and we're just here to pick up the pieces let's uh let's run the intro and get into this video Just on the second floor, it's pretty dark because there's literally no power on this side. Yeah, we had to pull in about 150 meters of 35 mil four core into this little cupboard in here. Got to bolt the earths onto the side of the enclosure. I had no heat shrink yesterday, so I'm just gonna take this tape off, heat shrink those. And then I've got the 35 coming out into the bottom of the board there. So we just got to strip it and connect that up. It's lugs down there as well. 250 amp main switch, so we're gonna smash this out really quickly, then we'll head downstairs. Sound like a plan, Jay? Oh, good. <laughs> this is Jay, he's gonna be my um, my temporary cameraman today. He's also just helping me out, shadowing me, showing him a few things. So, first job is to peel these neutrals off. So I just taped them yesterday, just, um, yeah, to keep moving really, keep things moving. But today I've come back with heat shrink. Hopefully I've got one with the right ratio to uh, slide over the top. If not, I'll have to just keep the tape on, but I'd rather remove the heat shrink. I did actually do loads of filming yesterday, but I gave up because it just wasn't going right for me. And I had a full SD card, no batteries and my mic died. Currently awaiting a pack out to sort all this out, hence the uh, heat shrink everywhere. That will probably go over the lug. That would be better. No, it wouldn't actually. That's probably the one I want. Okay, that's the perfect amount to just slide over the top, which means we can then peel this off and get it out of the way. I'm not gonna sit and pretend like I haven't used tape before because I have, it's very common, but you can see here, this is probably only like a year old and you can see it's already peeling off in places, peeling off down there. This neutral's obviously quite, you know, frayed. You can see how the good, all the glue, sorry, all the sticky on the tape sort of, yeah, just gone a bit weird. And that's what it will do. It will just slowly deteriorate. So it takes a long time uh, to completely unravel and if you do a lot of tape you'll probably be all right but that's why heat shrinks the one really and tape's not but we've all done it I'll tell you what this would have never have peeled off because i've done such a good job i can't even get it off with my fingers there we go all right there's one Now, this is controversial. As my friend JW Cable Joining likes to say, we like to keep it PG on the channel, but unfortunately, you can't always do that. This is my DeWalt heat gun in a, in a Milwaukee pack out case. <laughs> yeah, we won't talk about it. Let's go 
battery specifications downloads switch terminal six newton meters four mil allen bolt 15 newton meters for the neutral okay 15 newton meters it said so we just want to twist this all the way up there we go that's where these uh these like 125 and 150 cobras really come in handy is um yeah these, this is all I really use them for. Sometimes it's nice if you're doing a lot of stuffers as well. There we go. That's one way to do it. them curl around go straight up so we'll do this one first we can do a similar thing with that there we go curl around go straight up so about there mark it with my nail if i can there we go what am i going to need what am i going to need 25 i've got the tubes there for steve -O. 35s 35 sixes, 35 eights. Twenty-five eights. Twenty-five sixes, lovely. Well, still step cuts though. Yeah, step cuts. yeah, so I really like them. Um, these I've had like two years, and you can see I've literally blown a hole in them. Not that wasn't a bang, but I've cut something I shouldn't have. But these, mate, they cut through like 25, 35 mil, they're sick. But yeah, mine are getting a bit tired, but I have been absolutely abusing them to be fair. Yeah, I paid like 25 quid for mine. That's just the dual component, yeah, the red yeah, and the blue handles, blue. yeah. Amazon do them. Yeah. When we had loadout, we'd it would struggle to compete. They'd be about forty-five quid. They should be about forty-nine, but we'd always do about forty-five quid to compete. Amazon sometimes let them go for like forty quid, that's what I'm to and that's when you wanna, yeah, that's when you wanna get, jump on them. God knows how much money they're actually making when they do that, but yeah, yeah. that's why I'm not in that game anymore, mate. <laughs> I've actually got a set of step cuts literally on ice, mate, waiting. Okay. Um, prepped and ready to go. Prepped and ready to go. So I reckon I actually want to cut about there. But yeah, that's 25 mil. Considering there's literally like half the teeth yeah. missing, flies through it, you know. Lovely. Should you not double tap? I would normally, but with these. It's just a little bit too small. You'll probably yeah. deform the bell. What I'll be able to do is do what, yeah, like a half and half. I mean, it's basically in the same one. Mm. So that's made it a bit bigger, but if you go any more, you're gonna deform that, yeah. that end bit. And um, as soon as you're sort of manipulating the lug that much, it's probably not too good for it. That's a good thing about having an apprentice on the camera, which you guys are gonna be getting these these little questions from Jay. I'm actually in the market for an apprentice, I think. I'm not, um, I'm not too sure when, but I think next year I'm, um, I'm gonna be looking at getting an apprentice to work under me on these jobs. I can teach them up, get them on the camera a little bit, add a bit of a new dynamic to the channel, I think. Um, so yeah. Anyone who's keen on that idea, 
<laughs> You've got a job, unfortunately, Jay. Johnny won't allow that. Yeah, keep your ears peeled because that's what I'm thinking of doing. All right, there's one. We're going to twist that up and line up our second one. When it's stripped about there, which means we're probably going to want it cut about there. So this one, I'm going to orientate the other way. Like so. So it can sit back to back with this one. What that means is the lugs won't be fighting against each other too bad. One. So that one's, I've gone a bit low and deformed the lug. Again, it's not the end of the world. That's definitely not going anywhere, but that's why you probably wouldn't double tap them. It's not, I'm not 100% happy with that. It's, it's gonna be a sweet connection, but yeah. What I really need to do is just get the Milwaukee crimper that I've always wanted, but. Is that the one with Johnny? Uh, Johnny's got the dialus, hasn't he? Or has he got the one with the dies as well? He's got the dialus one, I think, which is nice. I thought he had the one with the dials. Maybe Sam got the one with the dials. Um, I want to get the die one, because I can borrow Johnny's dialus, which is great for like when you need a dialus one. Yeah. But, so dialus is for like um, a certain type of lug for a start. Mm -hmm. And it's popular with like, you know, tri-rated, like fine, fine stranded. Yeah. So we've got the IPS systems. Yeah, the IPS systems, the DC cables that we've been doing at Basingstoke, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A fine stranded cable takes far better and is specced sometimes on a dialless crimper can use it whatever but if you if you're following spec which if you're crimping a lot of the time you're following a spec then yeah you want to make sure you're kind of doing the right thing pop you on pop you on top yeah you think so but not everyone's that clued up mate right actually spinning the back bolt now so just gonna grab hold of that. Okay. Right. I am happy with that, to be honest with you. That's earthed at that end. That's gonna be earthed at the other end. So I'm not gonna bother linking these two banjos together with a bit of lead. I was thinking about it, but yeah, it's just gonna get too busy in there. It's more crimping, it's more work. Earths are bolted on, we're all tight, we're all sweet. Cool, let's, um, let's leave that there for now. Let's get down here. Do you find the difference from the and the Um, yes. Next to each other, 100%. The 12 volt is, um, is a lot less powerful, but sometimes you don't need that much power. So I'll admit the drill I get by with but I don't actually rate. There is a new one, so I might try the new one, the Gen 2, but I do miss 18 volt power on a drill, especially when you're doing like 64 mil hole saws in metal. And the M12 Impact, sweet. The multi-tool, sweet, although it runs through batteries. So yeah, most things are fine. I've got an 18 volt drill. I've got a hammer drill for like bigger holes. I've got the 12 volt SDS as well. I've got an 18 volt grinder. No point getting a 12 volt grinder. Just the, what you're putting it through is not worth it. So there's different things really, but for most stuff, like the bandsaw, 12 volt, <laughs> sweet. Do you use the bandsaw a lot? Or All the time, mate. It's probably, I wish I got it sooner. Yeah. Um, I really do wish I got it sooner. I'm unfortunately gonna have to go on the bottom for the earth, which isn't ideal, but I think I'm gonna swoop onto the bottom. Just want to centre. Let's have a look. Let's get you guys out of the way. Yeah, there we go. Let's do that. Cool. So Steve pre pre scores it before he puts it through the arm. I think. Yeah. So that's what I done on those. Yeah. Um, on this one, I would have done it if I could get to here. Yeah. 
but I knew it would be a nightmare. So I thought I'll just ride the sheaf out into the enclosure a bit more and just focus on stripping it when I'm actually in here. But that is the, probably the best way to do it, is to, is to do it outside. And that's what I've done on the two enclosures up there. Um, on the two enclosures, on the two armoureds in that enclosure up there. The other thing is, is luckily this, S, this cable, the... Um, it's all been taped up. Oh. No, no, the sheath just flies off. It? It's so easy. Some of the LSF stuff is an absolute nightmare to strip. So I definitely recommend. Also don't recommend cutting across your chest like this. There we go. So yeah, this stuff just flies off. It's lovely. Um, almost too easy though, because it's peeling off. Well, the downside of this stuff is if you flex the cables too much at where you've stripped it, it tears past this. Oh, okay. Because it's like so weak. Yeah. So it's really nice to strip, but it can end up not that neat. Obviously yeah. you could put like some Hellerman or some tape round here or something. That's what quite a few people um, do. That's it. Um, do you leave a little bit of the sheath inside the uh, enclosure or do you like to strip it all the way back to the ground? Uh, I like to leave a little bit normally, but in this case, I've definitely left more just because of these cables and stuff. So I'm literally just sort of tugging the plastic, uh, like the strings, just against my knife. And that's how I'm cutting through them. Also, if you pull them taut a little bit, they sort of ping back in a little bit. Um, so it's a nice way of getting them flush. So you just open the banjo, is that the enclosure, and it's a flight, Up there? Yeah. Yeah, because it's tied to the earth bar here, Yeah. this armoured, and the other one's tied to the earth bar what, at, in, the panel? At, in the panel, yeah. or it will be when me and Steve are done with it. Where do I put that lug? You're going to learn, Jay, that I'm just unorganised chaos. Oh, the lug's there. As long as it looks good at the end, Mike. Yeah. I like to think of myself as a chef, you know? The kitchen looks a mess, <laughs> but... Cordon around the other side. I don't know about that. I don't swear enough, do I? No. This is a perfect example of why you have torque ratings. What's happened is someone tightened these up so tight that when I was loosening them, these were tighter than the actual, the actual connections that the switch can take. So when I was loosening these lugs, I had to twist, obviously, and it pushed them all this way and it's actually pushed the side. If I take the cameras for a sec. These are pads, they just make it easier to gland onto rather than having your lugs. They give you the right clearance and stuff. These pads, when twisted, have pushed that out. So that's why these want to be at the right torque rating and these want to be at the right torque rating. So when some poor guy like me comes to loosen them all, they're not so tight that you're actually going to damage the switch to take them apart. You don't always see like good examples of why stuff should be the right torque, but that's quite a good one. Someone set the fire alarm. Oh. Funnily enough, the building that burnt nearly burnt down has got a, a fire alarm. We've got to evacuate. <laughs> I'll catch you guys in a bit. See, this is a problem. I'm actually going to have to whip that all the way out, I think. Yeah, the nut, the channel nut in the back is spinning. I'm going to have to call Steve, see what he wants to do. Hello, Mikey. Hello, mate. Could you come up and take a look at the state of this 250 amp switch? Um, is it Proteus, the Proteus one? Nah, nah, the Eaton one, mate, in the board. Um, yeah, let's, have a, let's have a little push, mate. Hang on, I'll be, I'll be, I'm literally up here now, mate. Give Sweet. Two minutes, I'll be, I'll be around with you. Cheers, mate, mate. That's what I'm on about with this. Yeah. 
splits where I've pulled this back just a little bit, it's split. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you just want to be careful with that. Is this him, is it? Here he is. Here he is. Right, so, there's been some developments. I don't know where we left you in the end. I think, was you still rolling when we called Steve? Uh, yeah. So we called Steve over, Steve's come out of luck. Now it's incredibly hard to show you, but basically this, these are spreaders or pads and th these ones are fully tightened up. You can see I'm applying a bit of pressure, they're not moving at all. This one is fully tightened up to its connection point via the washer, but it's got this much play in it. And that play, if you look underneath, is actually, that play is within the terminal inside the switch, we believe. Now we actually just ran some insulation resistance and some continuity tests because we weren't sure. And we couldn't get it to do it every time, but between here and here at 500 volts, we got like 200 mega ohms with the switch off. I mean, I struggled to find the torque ratings within the product guide, but with this, there will be a paper manual or there will be with the board that will probably have the right torque ratings. Um, and that's why you follow them because this switch, I mean, you can see on the side, it's cracked there. The play in that extends onto the actual, onto the actual connection point within the switch as these not moving at all, that one. It's not, it's not this bolt or where this bolt connects that's wrong. It's actually inside the switch, inside, yeah. Um, you know, there'll be, I guess, a, a, a connection here and a connection here. And then obviously the switch makes or breaks those connections. But yeah, whatever's going on, it's not right. And uh, that means what we're gonna have to do now is we're gonna have to get these all marked up exactly where we want them so that we're ready to just lug on and we're gonna have to replace the main switch. We are actually gonna see if we can cannibalize one of the main switches uh, from a floor below. Um, so we're gonna see if there's a 250 amp main switch either on the first floor or in an area that isn't utilized that so we might be able to get this on today. But if not, we're gonna to have to order a new switch and this isn't gonna be live today. This is just sort of the, the issues you run into. Um, <laughs> in commercial works, nothing is straightforward, nothing is simple and nothing is cheap. Yeah, we'll get these lugged up, we'll get them all sized up, we'll get the earth in and then uh, be ready to go downstairs. I'm gonna pass you back over to Jay. Put one dot on the neutral. Why would you do that for? Is that, that line there so that when I take this off, um, when I take this off so that I can actually crimp it on, I know what way to spin it, so I can line it up, crimp it there, and I know it's more, it doesn't matter, it's just a habit that I've formed really, but when you're doing like a 185 or a 240, you can't twist it, there's no play in it, and it, and you, yeah it's just a nightmare so it's just a good habit to do that and then it's sweet and then i've numbered the lug with one dot i'll do one two three four um just like if this comes off i'll know that it's got one dot on it so it's neutral two dots will be on there and but it probably won't come off but say if i did drop it i know that it's marked up for that so they just like those gutter bolt just without um this. so they're called a coach bolt so there's no head on there because it's not necessary and then here, you see you've got that square plate at the head of the, underneath yeah. the head. So that square plate, if you pop it in here, if you orientate it the right way, sits within this square. Oh. So that bolt's not gonna twist. So you don't need to get anything around the back to hold it because it's locked into here. Yeah. And that's why, because they over torque these so much when it comes to loosening them, because there's no play in it, it's just shifted the whole thing. Now I'm certain that this was already abused before I got involved and all I did was took the thing apart anyway, so I'm not really culpable. But yeah, that's, um, that's why it's basically done it. The bolts are really handy, really good, but in this situation, they've because they were over tightened, they've, they've caused issues, yeah. Stripped about there. Where's my step cut? There we go. So we're stripping about there which means you're on about that much. Okay, well. There we go. 
go. The old Chinese crimpers. They are actually all right. Craig. Hello. Um, I suddenly realised I sent you an email the other day about going to pop over to Reddit today. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, like mate, you know, you, you did. Um, I forgot, but it sounds like you forgot a little bit too. Yeah, they're expecting us. Is there any way you can pop over for it? I don't think it's far from you, just to have a look at it. Yeah. Um, for like an hour and then come back. Yeah, no worries, mate. Do you know when they're actually expecting me? up this morning at some point I think. Ah okay. Alright then mate. Let me I'm, yeah I'm just lugging on at the minute. Let me finish this off mate and then uh yeah I'll head over there. Cool thank you. Cheers mate bye Mate, if a reputable brand actually made one of these, they would be so popular. Because mm. um, they are good, they're just... What is it, just a hydraulic crimper? Yeah, mini one. Mm. Um, what, they're the only, one of the only brands that do it then? Well, it, that's the problem, it's, it's like a no-name brand. It's like some just made-in-China sort of stuff, no brand, but... If you had someone take it on, actually test it, ensure that it meets... I mean, it crimps, it's not going anywhere. I'm sure it's sweet, but... Crimping, generally, there's a lot of compliance involved and stuff like that, so you kind of want to, like, yeah... Make sure you're using the right bits and bobs. Even though it's all coming off again, we'll get it all put back together. I believe this goes on here. Clips on. Uh, so what's that? Is that like a CT? That is, yeah, is the actual current, is the is the coil, yeah, doing the measuring. Oh, well, and then that just displays it. Yeah. Cool, so they've fallen in there lovely. We can get this mounted on. Um, this mounted on, there we go, take my phone out of there, This head on here allows a bit of play for swiveling and this is where this really comes comes in clutch because I can get it onto that earth bolt there to loosen it in a place where I'd probably never get get anything. Um, it's not going to be back on today, mate. Unfortunately, is it, not? it was it was supposed to be, um, but this switch is 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 fucked basically. Oh, 
So we need to get a new one, and I'm not sure how long that's going to be, mate. No <coughs> problem. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now I've got that where I want it. I can form this a bit. A bit more like so. Not ideal, but it's a busy board and it's uh, already very well populated. That sweet earth comes along here, runs up into the enclosure. Obviously you've seen me sort of finish that off today. Did film a bit yesterday, but it just all went, went to shit basically. That is all for this video, I think, just because it's been running so long now that I think this will make a good maybe first part. And then in part two, we'll head downstairs, we'll connect this up into the MCCB panel. Maybe we'll have a replacement switch, probably not though. And hopefully I'll be able to show you a bit of the burnt out area as well. And some of the fire damage, which burnt the original sub main out. You'll see as well, maybe I'll put a little clip of it, but this sub main was completely destroyed in the fire. But what's quite funny is when they tested it, it actually bailed out sweet on insulation resistance. You'll see the exact state they found this cable in when we have a little walk around downstairs. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of content, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you on the next.